In this lecture, we're going to discuss the forces between two parallel wires. So suppose we have the following two wires parallel to one another and a distance t apart. Suppose that wire 1 has a current I1 flowing upward through wire 1. And suppose that wire 2 has a current I2 flowing upward through that wire. And now suppose that our magnitude of our uh, current is exactly the same. So I1 equals I2. Now, recall that any current moving in a wire or moving charge through a wire will create a magnetic field. And this magnitude of our magnetic field is given by the following formula, while the direction of my magnetic field is given by the right-hand rule. Now, what this formula states is the following. The magnetic field created by our current moving through our wire is given by mu naught divided by 2 pi, which is simply a constant. Mu naught is the permeability of free space. Now, I is our current moving through that wire, and R is simply the distance from which we want to find our magnetic field. Now, so in our two cases, the current I1 moving through wire 1 will create the magnetic field, and let's call this B1. Likewise, current I2 moving through wire 2 will create a magnetic field as well, and let's call this magnetic field B2. Now, and since magnetic fields exert a force on current carrying wires, that means magnetic field created by wire 1 will exert a force on wire 2. In other words, the magnetic field B1 created by wire 1 will exert a force on wire 2. And likewise, the magnetic field created by wire 2, namely B2, will exert a force on wire 1. So the magnetic field of this guy will affect this guy, and likewise the magnetic field of this guy, wire 1, will affect our wire 2. So let's find out our directions of our magnetic fields. So let's look at wire 1. Let's look at the aerial or top to bottom view of this picture. Let's flip this, uh, these guys over this way. Now this is what we see. Notice this circle and the dot simply means that our currents are coming out of the page. And that's exactly what we should see when we look from top to bottom because our currents are both going up. So current 1 in wire 1 is coming out of the page. And that means to find the uh, direction of our magnetic field B1 we have to use the right hand rule. So, notice that our current is coming out, so our thumb should point in the direction of our current as we take our or grip our wire. And that means our direction of our field will be going in this direction. And that's why I drew these arrows. Likewise, let's find the direction of magnetic field B2 due to current 2 or I2 in wire 2. So, once again, I grip it this way and I find that my magnetic field is also pointing in this direction. Now, to find what this guy, or how this guy affects this guy, and this guy affects this guy, I have to make sure I'm dealing with a distance t. So my, my r in this formula is my d. And that's exactly how I drew it. Notice that the red line corresponds to the magnetic field created by uh, wire Two, or the current I2 flowing in wire 2. Likewise, my blue line, which is touching my wire 2, is actually created by my wire 1, or my current I1 flowing within my wire 1. So, let's remember what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the force that wire 1 feels due to our magnetic field of wire 2. And we also want to find the force that wire 2 feels due to the magnetic field of wire 1. So before we find the magnitudes, let's use the second version of our right hand rule to find the direction in which our forces will point. So let's begin with wire 1. Well, wire 1 has a current flowing out of the page, out of our board, and it experiences a magnetic field going this way. So we use our right hand rule, our current is traveling this way, our force or our magnetic field goes this way, and that means the force that it will experience was going this way. So that's why we drew this force. So this is the force 
on wire 1 due to the magnetic field of wire 2. Likewise, we can find in the same way the force that wire 2 experiences due to the magnetic field of wire 1. So let's look at this guy. Now notice that this guy, our current is also going out of our board. But now our field is going upward, or our magnetic field is going upward. So we, our current is going this way, our magnetic field is going upward this way, so our force is going inward this way. So that's exactly why we drew the arrow this way. This represents the vector, the force that wire 2 experiences due to the magnetic field of wire 1. So they're pointing in this direction. And that means if we have two parallel wires that both have currents going in the same direction, these guys are going to attract each other. Now let's find the magnitude of the force. Remember, the force that's created by a magnetic field on a moving current through some wire with the length L is given by the following formula. Force is equal to magnetic field times I times L. Now there also should be assigned theta here, but because our degree is 90 degree, these guys are tangent to each other, sine 90 simply 1. So that means we just are left with F equals Bill. Now, let's find the force of this guy. So the force that wire 1 feels due to the magnetic field of wire 2. That means force 1 or force on wire 1 is equal to the magnetic field of wire 2 multiplied by the current that's flowing through wire 1, I1, multiplied by the length of wire 1. Notice that when we're trying to find force 1, we're using our magnetic field of wire 2. Likewise, if we want to find the force that wire 2 experiences due to the magnetic field of wire 1, we have to use the magnetic field of wire 1. So, uh, force that 2 or wire 2 experiences is equal to the magnitude or magnetic field of wire 1 multiplied by the, the current that's flowing through wire 2 multiplied by our length of wire 2. And now let's look at these guys. Now we can use this formula to represent our magnetic field of, of uh, wire 1 and magnetic field of wire 2. And we get the following result. These guys are almost identical. The only difference is there is I1 here and I2 here. But remember what we said in the beginning. We said that these two guys have equal magnitudes. So these are actually the same exact values. But either way, I could take B1 and plug it into B1 here. And B2, I could take this whole guy and plug it into B2 here. And I get the following final results for my forces. The force that wire 1 experiences due to the magnetic field of wire 2 is equal to this whole guy. And likewise, the force that wire 2 experiences due to the magnetic field of, <coughs> of wire 1 is equal to this whole guy. So notice that because our I1 and I2 are equal, because we assumed equal lengths and our D is equal, these two forces are exactly equal, but they're in opposite direction. And that means these guys are attracting. Now suppose I change this current to going downward. So one is going up and one is going down. So if I use my right hand rule, I will see that my forces will be pointing one in this way and one in this way. So that means if I have two wires that are parallel to one another and one has a current going up and the other one has a current going down, that means they're going to repel each other. But if I have two currents going up, these guys are going to attract each other.